uh, moving over to the defensive side of the ball, which kind of was their Achilles heel in uh, 2023, they ranked dead last in the FBS in terms of total yards allowed, giving up 476.4 yards per game, 118th in sacks, only getting a one and a half per game. Uh, what did the Mean Green do to this in the offseason to try to shore up this offense? Or, sorry, defense and, and you know it make some improvements for 2024. I mean, that was the, that was arguably the big story of the whole deal last year. It, I mean, just the logistics of it didn't set up well for North Texas. If you think about it, last year they the year before uh, Coach got here, you know they were under Phil Bennett and uh, who's arguably one of the best defensive coordinators in college football the last what, 30 years. And the guy was everywhere, LSU, Kansas State, you know, and that kind of thing. And they ran that they they ran that kind of 4-3 scheme. And then they go, you know, Morris decides, okay, well, the defense has always given me the most problems is the 3-3-5. Three, three, um, I want to run that as a defense. And then he hired uh, Matt Capone, uh, who was a uh, – the cornerbacks coach at Iowa State to come in and be the defensive coordinator. So essentially, you're going for one of the most experienced defensive coordinators running in the country, one of the great ones of the era, running this specific system. And the only reason they were able to get Phil Bennett, they got him out of retirement, is because he's really close with Seth Luttrell. Like they were, you know, uh, Bennett was one of his mentors because they they go all the way back to when Seth's playing days at Iowa at uh, Oklahoma. Well, all of a sudden, okay, so he's gone. And now you, you decide you're going to hire a guy who's a first-time defensive coordinator running a completely new scheme with players that you didn't recruit to play that scheme. So the whole thing was set up to be a disaster from the start. And that's kind of what happened. You know, the whole year, you know, they talked about, you know, we just don't really have the players to fit this system. We need to, you know, to, to really do some recruiting and revamping of the whole thing. Now you can go back and question, okay, well, if you didn't have the players to play that system, why are we, why do you sit there and shove the square peg into the round hole the whole freaking year and not at least make some, you know, do something a little different. And they did do a little bit of adjusting. Like I'm, they had one guy last year who was just an absolute monster in Bennett system um, who was like really – I mean, he's very clearly a four-three defensive end, and he they moved him into the into the three-three-five, and it just didn't. It just didn't. He did his production just absolutely plummeted. Is that amazing. is that Richards? Yeah, Mason. Yeah, yeah. Mason had that monster season. <laughs> yeah, and the, you know, you know, Mason ends up in twenty twenty two. He has 12, 12 and a half tackles for loss and seven and a half sacks and seventy eight tackles. You know, so you think, okay, well, this guy. You, you hope, okay, well, he'll progress a little bit and be even better as a senior. Well, his production fell off to 47 tackles, 10 and a half tackles for loss and three sacks on the year. So, I mean, that was just kind of, just kind of one example of the way things just didn't work out. And so that every week you heard like, okay, well, we just haven't, we, we don't really have the guys to fit what we want to do. And they just never really, really gelled or mashed and that kind of thing. So what, of course, what they did is what everybody does in college football. They went and dipped into the transfer portal a little hard to go try to grab guys that fit the system. And some of the things that they did made a lot of sense, right? They brought in J.J. Jean Louis, uh, a linebacker who was at Iowa State, who was recruited to play that Iowa State system and didn't really immediately pan out there. So he can't, he comes down in here. They bring in Jake Shipley from Oregon, a defensive end, defensive lineman type guy that could, you know, theoretically help them there. And then the thing they really did was they went really hard after rebuilding their secondary. Cause that was the, the one big thing they, they always pointed to was like, okay, if we're going to play this system, we need a bunch of safeties that can come downhill and tackle. And that really wasn't, this that wasn't the skill set of the guys that they had. So they go out and they they, they go grab Jaden Hill, a guy from Ohio Dominican, who there was a coaching tie there. He was at a D2 school, was a, a, a really good player there, and wanted to try to make it jump to the D1 level. They grabbed David Sprules from Northern Arizona, who's coming back to town. They grabbed BJ Allen, I think from I think he was Texas, uh, as a transfer. I'm in college. 
Um, and then they also grabbed uh, Ashim Young, who makes a ton of sense. He he played in that system at Iowa State, and was and also played it at Ole Miss. And they brought in Xavier Bryce, a cornerback from Texas. So that whole defense just brought a, a completely necessary influx of transfer talent. And the question is going to be, okay, did these all get? Do these guys all mesh? Do they? Do, do a higher high enough percentage of them work out to where they'll be significantly better than they were last year. And I think that kind of remains to be seen, but at least you kind of can see on paper, okay, well, this is what they did to address it. And yes, on paper, it does at least make sense. So how, I mean, how did, I mean, you kind of took us through the whole defense. How did all of that stuff look here in the spring and over the course of the practices, if you had to rank like, okay, the defensive line got the best and then the linebackers in the secondary, like, I guess, how, how, how did those jive? Well, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, North Texas is, is pretty locked down as far as um, practice goes. They let you out there for like the first period to see them stretch and that's about it. And then you get kicked out. So the only thing we saw was the spring game. Um, and then, so all, all you can glean from this is what you saw in the spring game what the coaches say and what the players say. And, you know, there can be a lot of truth in that sometimes, and then sometimes it's just completely not anywhere close to reality. So it's kind of, you kind of got to judge it based on what your gut feeling is. And just from what they said, from what we saw in the spring, yeah, I think they're going to be better. It just, I think the pieces fit a little bit better. I think the guys maybe believe in the defense a little bit more. Now, does that translate that a bit? into them being 10 points a game better, five points a game better. You know, I, I'm not sure we're going to know that until the fall, until we actually, until they actually get out there and see that. Cause I mean, the big thing that they had problems with last year is they were the absolute worst team against the run, against the run of the country by like 20 yards. You know, I think they gave up like 255 a game and the, the team that, that ranked up, uh, the team that ranked the next, lowest was like 232 out here. I've got it right here. So yeah, Rush, that's going to be the, that's going to be the whole thing. Are they not, are they not absolutely horrendous on rush defense? Because if you look at it right here, they finished 130 out of 130 with 255.2 yards allowed rushing per game. The team that finished 129 was Louisiana tech, which allowed 232. And that just says it all. So, I mean, when you're going to have 20 more rushing yards per game than anybody else in the country, you're going to have a heck of a lot of problems. Um, there were games like – the one that comes to mind is, you know, they played that really tight game with that key rival UTSA. And UTSA got in this, uh, in the, like a third and forever situation. They handed it off to their – to Kavori and Barnes, and he ran for like 20 yards in a first down. And that was kind of it. And I'm like, well, there's your – that's just the – entire season in a nutshell for them defensively the um talk a little bit about the the linebackers you know that jordan brown returns um ethan uh wesolowski who was i guess a redshirt freshman last year had a pretty impressive year and then like you said they brought in um jj john louis you think those three guys kind of guys are the starters who do you think is going to be in the middle or well yeah i don't think I don't think any of this is going to change a whole lot. I think Jordan was their leading tackle last year, you know, and he'll, he'll continue to improve. So I think you're, you'll see Jordan Brown and Ethan Wislowski. And then the other guy they have back is Jalen Smith, who played that other outside linebacker spot. Now they brought in JJ Jean Louis, who will, will also be on that, on one of the, at one of those outside linebacker spots. I think it's just going to depend on how much that guy, how quickly he had, just and how quickly he gets up to speed and how much Jalen improves. But I think you're going to probably see that batch of guys there. And then a couple of transfers they brought in last year, Chavez Brown and CJ Garnett will probably round out your depth chart. At least that's what we've got at this point. But I mean, you're essentially, you're going to, you're going to, you may end up seeing the same three guys with JJ kind of sprinkled in there. It's just going to be a matter of whether or not they continue to get better. And I think, more than more than anything, it's going to be about whether or not this defensive line that really only added one key new player 
can hold up and if these this secondary that they think is going to be dramatically better especially at the safety spots are those guys dramatically better do Jaden hill david sprules bj allen especially Ashim young do those do those batch of guys end up being big time playmakers that shore up their run defense or are they going to have the same problems to a certain extent that they did last year is is there talking about that backfield is there a player that you kind of see I, I i'm assuming kind of would take over that patrick smith role um from last year well i mean i think that i mean the lead guy in that secondary that we've been hearing about this guy since the moment he walked on campus is a sheen young and you know that's the guy that they're going to depend on um, that everybody talks about it's saying, okay, this is the guy that, you know, he knows the system. He's a big leader out there. Um, he's got the talent and the size to make this work. And, uh, you know, so I think it's going to largely, he's going to be the guy they look to. I mean, he's 5'10", he's 215 pounds. You know, he played, in, he started nine games at Ole Miss. Um, and then he was also at... He played in, yeah, he he started 24 games for Iowa State, uh, you know, and put up some pretty impressive numbers there. He had 106 tackles in his time at Iowa State. You know, that guy's played at the highest levels, and he's played in the system, and he's played for this defensive coordinator. So they they have a lot of belief that this guy is going to come in here and really make a big difference. And I think it's going to depend a lot largely on what that guy does and what the leadership he provides for the rest of that secondary, along with uh, Ridge Tejada, their, you know, their returning corner who's been around for a long time and a good player for them. Do you think Ashim kind of plays that hybrid role or is he going to be more like the, you know, the kind of the. No, he's going to be the star. Okay. He's going to be the star, the center, the center safety in the system. That's okay. exactly yeah. what they recruited for him. That's what he played at Iowa State. That's what he's going to play here. So if it, if it all stays like we we think it's going to, you're looking at Jaden Hill or David Sproles, the two transfers at the free safety spot. You're looking at B.J. Allen or Evan Jackson. It was actually a pretty good freshman for them last year at that boundary safety spot. And then the key spot in the whole system is what they always say is the key spot in the whole system is that star, which is that center, yep. that center safety in there. And they'll have Young in there, along with Javen Anderson. He was a pretty impressive freshman last year. He was one of those, you know, like G5 recruits that could have not been a G5 recruit, but, you know, like the coach or like the, you know, he was one of those really good gets for North Texas. And he had a pretty good freshman year. He, you know, he had some really good plays, made some mistakes along the way, just like any freshman does. But, He's going to be a good player for them long term, but he'll be uh, playing behind a sheen here, you know, theoretically for, you know, one year. So if you had to pick a defensive player to have a breakout here in 2024, who would that be? Oh, for sure. I mean, that's the, yeah, you're going to, I would say, you know, they talked about how, when they played the system at Iowa State, the guy that who played that star center, that star safety spot, that center safety spot, like how many times that guy was went on to put up monster numbers and was all Big 12 or all Big 12 second team or, you know, won this honor or that honor or whatever. If they're going to be any good um, in this system, they're going to need a Sheen to put up, you know, a really good season. Uh-huh.